So thank you here for the kind introduction. And with that, um, I also warmly welcome, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, to this uh, Nelson Labs virtual symposium. I'm uh, Philip Lauwers representing Turimo Pharmaceutical Solutions, and the scope of my presentation will be how polymer-based prefilled syringes can help minimize the aggregation risk, uh, specifically of sensitive biotech drugs. So this is a snapshot of my presentation. I will first kick off with a corporate introduction about Remo for those people in the audience that are less familiar with our corporate organization. Next, I will focus and highlight some of the current challenges of uh, managing biopharmaceuticals. And next, how Plagex as a polymer-based prefillable syringe system can help um, preserve and manage sensitive biotech drugs. We will also deep dive on the silicon oil free solution that we provide using Plagex and our eye coating stoppers. And how it also helps to minimize uh, the risk of protein oxidation uh, by using oxygen scavengers, by also using the steam sterilization methods that we have selected and validated for our polymer primary containers. And last but not least, I will also um, highlight some of the aspects of the contact materials. But again, also linking to the uh, steam sterilization methodology that we apply for our primary container components and some of the extractable and leachable studies that we have executed um, in partnership with Nelson Labs. So with that, let's get started and let's do a quick uh, introduction about uh, Turimo as a corporate organization. Um, some of you may have picked it up last year, but uh, in 2021, we actually celebrated our centennial. Um, so Turimo was founded in 1921. It's uh, by origin a Japanese company, and our headquarter is still located in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, but as you will see in the coming few slides, we are a true global organization with a global spread. Um, our sales amounts uh, close to six billion US dollars, uh, and we have around 26,000. Uh, associates worldwide. As I said, we are still um, headquartered in Japan, uh, but nevertheless, we have a uh, global spread and our overseas revenue um, accounts for roughly 69% uh, of, of the total revenue generated. So for those people that are less familiar with our uh, Turimo business units, um, Turimo as a corporate organization consists of three major uh, pillars. Uh, to note the cardiac and vascular company, the general hospital company, and the blood management company. I won't deep dive too much into the details of each of the business units. Uh, the slide deck is obviously available after the event, and all of the information obviously is also available on our corporate website. I think important to mention is that our TPS, Trimo Pharmaceutical Solutions um, business unit, is part of the Alliance business, which is quite particular in the global uh, Trimo organization in that we are the only B2B business-to-business -business, um, unit compared to all of the other uh, business units which have a B2C setup. So now I will focus on some of the current uh, challenges of biopharmaceuticals. And this is actually a real-life example. Some of you um, may be familiar with it. Um, it's a drug called uh, Omontis, which was uh, withdrawn uh, not too long after the commercial launch, actually less than a year after the commercial launch. And this was mainly due to uh, 49 cases of uh, anaphylaxis, uh, including seven uh, mortalities that were reported. Um, investigational work was done, and actually um, it was found that the um, high levels of subvisible particle loads um, were potentially the major cause of these uh, hypersensitivity cases and the seven people that unfortunately passed away um, after the product launch. Um, the root cause I identified was that in clinical phase three studies, um, a monodose file was used as a commercial, as a uh, um, clinical trial presentation uh, packaging container. But with the market launch, uh, they moved and they transitioned into a multi-dose file. And although all of the physical, chemical uh, assessments did not highlight any shortcomings, it was afterwards, as I said, shown that the high levels of uh, subvisible particle loads were probably leading 
uh, to these uh, high level of uh, hypersensitive cases. And again, I just wanted to bring this up as a real life example of um, why um, you know some of the challenges related to subvisible particles uh, and, and why it is really important um, to to monitor those, to quantify and identify them, uh, and, and be aware. This next slide uh, highlights the guidance for industry, which is um, um, yeah, material of reference for anybody working in our industry. It was released by the FDA in the summer of 2014, and it uh, lists a number of factors that may potentially affect immunogenicity in therapeutic protein products. Uh, first and foremost, um, it is well understood and acknowledged that protein aggregates may provoke or fuel uh, unwanted adverse immune responses. Chemical modifications, including um, oxidation, may lead to the same type of events. And again, subvisible particle range, specifically in the range uh, 0.1 to 10 micrometers, also have shown to have a, a strong uh, potential to be immunogenic. And then also leachables coming from the container closure system um, may be another uh, attribute that may potentially provoke immunogenicity um, by chemically changing the therapeutic uh, protein product. I think it's also generally acknowledged and understood in our industry that um, the regulatory framework is becoming more and more um, scrutinizing. And this is a snapshot um, of some of the major updates from the USP uh, 40 edition, uh, completely new chapters, uh, including the USP uh, 1663 and 64, informative chapters specifically on best practice for extractable studies, and 64 for the assessment of leachables. Beyond that, uh, revisions of the 661, specifically important for our business unit as it relates to plastic packaging materials, and then new informational chapters, the 1787, as an addition or a supplement to the 787, again, relating uh, to the measurement of visible particles. So what we as Turimo um, a few years ago decided to do was um, to, you know, really look at a uh, system approach. So we took into account, um, you know, and this is a non-exhaustive list of potential causing factors, such as physical stress, chemical stress, and others, and the potential issues that we have uh, identified and which are generally acknowledged in the industry coming from silicon oil, tungsten, and glue, but also physical stress on the headspace, which may potentially lead to increased levels of aggregation, um, leachables, which again have an adverse uh, effect, also oxidation coming from dissolved oxygen, but also from um, high energy um, stabilization activities, and then also um, mechanical stress delamination and uh, potential particles. So what we decided to do was really to develop uh, a completely new system approach that uh, could tackle uh, ideally all of these uh, factors. And this is what we have introduced already a couple of years ago. It's Plagex as a COP, a cyclic olefin polymer um, barrel material with an eye coating silicon oil free stopper. And it's specifically designed for sensitive uh, biotech drugs. So we have uh, the raw material, uh, COP polymer barrel, which um, you know is the result of an insert molding process. So we don't use any tungsten pins, we don't use glue, it's a laser welding process. Also, from a mechanical resistance perspective, it's a very high break resistance um, primary container to prevent protein aggregation. Um, we have our eye coating stopper technology, which is 100% silicon oil free, but also uh, contributes to significantly uh, reducing the levels of visible particles. Prevention of protein oxidation by using oxygen scavenger technology, but also using steam sterilization. And then finally, also, um, low extractables, um, specifically um, on the COP, so the raw materials, as well as, again, the steam sterilization, which we apply. So if we deep dive uh, specifically on the eye coating technology, it's a silicon oil free system. Um, it's the spray coated uh, silicon resin, which adheres uh, to the substrate uh, rubber material, which really allows and enables a very smooth material, uh, thereby um, provoking or resulting into no break loose force and uh, very low uh, predictable glide forces, but also enhanced uh, container closure integrity due to the smooth uh, finish on the top surface. 
if we look at um, some of the uh, benefits and values that we have created, um, so here we compare a silicon oil free system and a siliconized system, um, both for water for injection and protein products. And we uh, distinguish between what we would describe as silicon oil derived particles and aggregated particles. And you see that um, in terms of silicon oil particles, of course, with a silicon oil free system, it's, it's zero. Um, with a silicon oil system, you see that um, you get uh, significantly higher amounts, uh, both in water for injection liquids, as well as in a protein solution, which is easy to understand. Um, when we look at aggregated particles, um, none of those are present in water for injection, but because simply there is no material uh, to aggregate. Whereas in a protein solution, you see with a silicon oil system, um, there are significantly higher uh, numbers of um, aggregated particles. It is generally understood that a plastic polymer material is uh, lower in performance compared to a traditional glass primary container because of the higher uh, water vapor transmission rates and oxygen transmission rates. But if we specifically focus on oxygen um, barriers or gas barriers, um, actually one uh, technology that we have successfully introduced for well over 15 years in the Japanese market is using a so-called oxygen scavenger. Um, and this really helps to significantly lower um, the, the, the gas uh, barrier properties. So <clears throat> what it actually does is uh, it prevents protein oxidation. Um, so you have a high barrier um, secondary packaging system to which you add an oxygen scavenger uh, or an oxygen absorber. So it's an iron um, uh, complex, which is in a pouch a presentation which is then put into the D-drawn medical blister. And what it actually does is it not only um, absorbs the residual air in the headspace of the secondary packaging, but also the um, oxygen which is present in the air bubble inside the syringe, as well as the dissolved oxygen in the protein solution inside um, the liquid. And what we did here is actually a face-to-face -face comparison between a glass um, pre-filled syringe and a Plagex uh, polymer syringe with an oxygen scavenger embedded in the secondary packaging. So the top graph shows um, the system where you don't use an oxygen scavenger and the black line um, describes the evolution of uh, dissolved oxygen in parts per million in the syringe. So you see with glass, there's already an effect, but it's quite limited. Um, and with the polymer plagic system, you see that there is a significant decrease um, provoked by the oxygen absorber technology, uh, which really helps you to, um, to, to withdraw any uh, excess oxygen, both from the secondary packaging as well as the primary packaging. Now, the real life value of that is shown in the third uh, graph, where we um, depict the uh, erythropoietin instability in the polymer syringe. And we actually quantified the percentage of oxidized methionine in the EPO formulation. So without secondary packaging and oxygen scavengers technology, you see that there is an, uh, quite a significant increase in the percentage of oxidized methionine. Whereas with using the oxygen um, absorber technology, you see that there is a small increase, but then again, a significant decrease in uh, oxidized methionine which actually has shown that uh, for real life and commercial products, it helps to extend um, the shelf lifetime of, of sensitive oxygen sensitive uh, biotech drugs. Um, next chapter is then specifically on why we strategically chose uh, steam sterilization over other um, um, sterilization, high energy sterilization methods. And the methodology that we applied is that we um, first sterilize polymer syringes um, with steam, what we apply, or with uh, e-beam um, irradiation technology. Then we fill them with erythropoietin and we store them for up to uh, three months. So first using um, electron um, resonance um, uh, spin technology, we quantified the residual radical uh, amounts uh, so this is for the empty um, sterilized polymer syringes. And you see that the amount of um, free radicals in steam sterilized syringes is comparable to unsterilized syringes, whereas for uh, E-beam irradiated uh, polymer syringes, you see that there is a uh, log 3, log 4 increase in um, free radical presence. 
Now, again, the real-life implications of that is, again, that we quantified um, the percentage of oxidized methionine in uh, EPO formulation. And we see for uh, steam ETO and, e and uh, non-sterilized syringes that um, the percentages are, are significantly lower compared to uh, E-beam um, sterilized syringes, which is a strong indication that those free radicals actually accelerate the oxidation of sensitive um, proteins and therapeutic drugs. And then lastly, um, again, we did quite a few studies, uh, extractable and leachable studies uh, with Nelson Lab. So we thought it would be valuable to highlight some of the uh, outcomes of those studies. So first of all, we did an extractable uh, study on our uh, container closure system. And we hope to prove that, um, uh, you know, material, the, the raw material selection, as well as the um, sterilization methodology all helped to, um, to, to reduce the amount of, of extractables. Um, so we filled Plagex polymer syringes with water for injection and we extracted them um, at 121 degrees for one hour. And then we quantified uh, the organic extractable compounds uh, by liquid uh, chromatography uh, followed by MS. So if you look at uh, material composition uh, in terms of um, barrel material, so we compared COP with glass, we see that there are virtually no peaks. So we see that um, you know, the, the, the level of organic uh, extractables is comparable uh, and extremely low between uh, COP barrel and, and glass barrel. However, for the stopper material that we <coughs> selected, which is a chlorinated uh, butyl rubber, we see that there are fewer peaks and lower peaks compared to uh, traditional uh, standard butyl rubber formulation in the industry. So there, I think we are in a position to say that um, the um, organic extractable uh, extractables derived from the rubber material is lower uh, for the chlorinated butyl rubbers that we have selected. Um, I didn't include it in this slide, but we've also been able to show that the number of peaks and the height of the peaks um, um, is significantly lower for the steam sterilization material um, that we apply compared to uh, ETO or uh, E-beam uh, high energy sterilization. So it's a combination of selectively uh, or carefully selecting um, the raw materials as well as the uh, sterilization methodology that really leads to uh, extremely low levels of uh, organic extractables. Next, uh, study two is a leachable study. Uh, so we filled uh, 5 ml project syringes with water for injection um, and we stored them for up to three years in this leachable study under 25 degrees, 60% uh, relative humidity. Important to note is that we also labeled uh, the syringes with a uh, polypropylene-based label using acrylic uh, glue. And then we analyzed, or rather Nelson Labs analyzed the organic leachable compounds, uh, but also elemental impurities. Um, I won't dive too much into the details, but you see that uh, the results were quite comparable, extremely low levels of organic leachable <clears throat> levels uh, and well below um, you know, the toxicity threshold, both for COP syringe and, and, and you know, the um, uh, compared material, which was a glass bottle. And also in terms of um, label-related leachables, uh, those could not be detected either. Then in terms of uh, elemental uh, leachables, those were very low again, and components were not considered as a concern of toxicity, so well beyond the toxicity uh, or below the toxicity threshold. So overall, we can say that um, no differential compounds uh, compared with the control between uh, our COP barrel system and um, uh, control glass bottle. No leachables detected either related to the secondary packaging, uh, the additional components, including label and glue. And the leachable levels from the primary packaging uh, were again much lower than um, the toxicity thresholds. And then finally, uh, the third study, which was um, a 1ml Plagex steak needle syringe, which we filled with a Humira adalimumab simulant, which we stored at uh, cold storage conditions in darkness uh, for up to three years with intermediate time point analysis. Much like with study two, we also applied a polypropylene-based label with an acrylic-based uh, glue uh, to, to adhere it uh, to the syringe barrel. And again, here we analyzed uh, the organic leachable compounds 
elemental impurities, but also acrylic acid uh, to assess potential leachables coming from the glue component. Um, again, if that would be of interest uh, of anybody in the audience, uh, just know that we can uh, that we can share the summary leachable and extractable reports with you. So if if any need, don't don't hesitate to reach out. But in um, you know, in conclusion, we can say that the leachable levels uh, for the plan, uh, project's container closure system filled with the Sumira simulant and stored at cold storage conditions were much lower than the toxicity threshold and the label-related leachables could not be detected. So um, I think it's generally acknowledged in the industry that there is increased concern on uh, applying labels and glue to uh, polymer um, or, or uh, plastic primary containers. But I think um, it really comes down to, first of all, carefully selecting your raw materials that make the container closure system. And on top of that, also carefully selecting uh, secondary packaging components, including labels and, and uh, glues. So the overall conclusion, uh, based on the analysis and studies done with Nelson Labs, is that we claim that Logix offers a low leachable um, container closure system, prefillable syringe system, um, thereby applying low extractable leachable uh, raw materials and well-selected secondary packaging components. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope uh, to have proven and, and shown that you know the combination of uh, the COP resin raw material with the high coating proprietary silicone-free technology really is a system approach that we have developed and validated, which really helps to preserve sensitive biotech drugs and prevent or lower the risk for aggregation and oxidation. Um, thereby highlighting again uh, the tungsten-free, glue-free nature of our container closure system, the fact that um, we offer high mechanical uh, resistance uh, and properties, which uh, could be an added value for bi biotech drugs, and uh, incorporating them, uh, the primary container, into an auto-injector, for instance. The fact that it's a completely silicon oil-free system with very low subphysical particle loads. Uh, we can offer solutions for oxygen-sensitive biotech drugs, and the fact that we have opted for steam sterilization uh, means that it's a completely radical free, which again helps to prevent uh, protein oxidation and may potentially extend the, the shelf lifetime of your sensitive drug product. And last but not least, we have um, carefully selected low extractable leachable raw materials for our container closure system and linked to that. Uh, and in addition to that, also a uh, mild um, sterilization methodology in applying steam sterilization. Um, we are a scientific and uh, scientific research driven company. Uh, so we have a lot of, um, you know, scientific material backing our claims. Uh, this is just a small selection of some of the references that we've used in, in um, assembling the slide deck. If there is a specific need for any material, uh, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out. And with that, um, I thank the audience very much for their um, attention. And I'm now ready to take any question from the audience. Thank you very much.